is Tuesday, February 9th, 2016. Mike and Turnus here. How you doing, Turnus? I'm all right. How, How you doing? doing? Doing well, doing right. well. This Good is day. the C3 podcast, y'all. First week of February. We told you we had more content, and here it is. Yep. That hold being on, said... Hold on to your hats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's about to get crazy. Yeah, keep those socks stapled. Because <laughs> uh, you're about to come flying off. Uh... First off, congratulations to the uh, Denver Broncos for winning the Super Bowl yeah, this past weekend. It was quite the game. Carolina got uh, got a little shell shocked there, yeah, from the from looks of it. And which, being a Green Bay fan, I mean, hey, my my team didn't make it, but <laughs> you're done this video, Kyle. Stay out of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, they didn't make it. But you know what? Denver played a good game. Peyton can retire. He got his 200 wins. You know, there's all sorts of fun, uh, you know, fun back back alley stuff about you know it being rigged and all the, all that <laughs> stuff. And you know, give him his 200th win, let him retire with a Super Bowl, another Super Bowl ring. Uh, the Panthers just that that O line. I don't know if they were paid off or not, but I mean, collapse. Yeah, I and mean, they just Cam lost his cool and. <laughs> Whatever, but um, you more. Know, I forgot to mention that the, the first person Peyton Manning hugged after the Super Bowl was Papa John. That's right. That's right. Papa John getting all the love from Mr. Manning. Right on, right on. Um, but I think the, uh, the, the, the big thing here to discuss um, for sports fans and non sports fans alike, and you might ask, like, what does this have to do with C3 movies, music, media, all that fun stuff? Um, but I feel that. Uh, you know, culture, cinema, yep, yep. things that, that we do fall General into. awareness. And, like, the the fallout over the last 48 hours has been, for me, I find it absolutely hilarious and and absolutely uh, scary at the same time. Because there's all this stuff about, oh, it was just pushing a, a homosexual agenda and how it was pushing, uh, you know, the Black Panthers and all this. Mm-hmm. And I honestly, um, I, I didn't see any of that. I saw a production. I saw... You know, a stage show with musical performances. Um, you know, so anybody that wears black now, that's a. If you wear black at a perform, you know, a black leather outfit, that's a. Yeah. That's a black pride thing. Well, it's kind of funny because actually, I didn't, I didn't see the game, I didn't see the halftime show, so I'm catching only the fallout of everything. So I'm just, I'm. That's the only end I'm actually seeing. So I'm getting all this like, I, I have like no kind of no base to go off, but yeah, from what I hear, it was just this like terrible, just super super racist super ju- just the it was a fiasco is what it was right and for me i'm just like, i don't i every super like the biggest fiasco i've ever seen in a super bowl halftime show was the terrible job the black eyed peas did that one year and that, <laughs> that's about it for me when like, slash came out yeah, every, yeah everything else i mean it's you know it's they're gonna do crazy stuff you know i mean i'm glad it's not left shark Hey, right. last year, yeah, you know, bring back that was, shark. I was so oh, I hated that so much. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just it's so stupid to see. I think just people make so much of a of nothing, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it, and I'm and I'm with you. There's just I honestly did not see any type of agenda being pushed. I did not see, and hey, maybe we are just blind and whatever. But you know, I <laughs> man, I mean, I tried. I definitely tried to overanalyze it and you know i couldn't come up with any yeah, just, like i could i honestly could not come up with like anything for me it looked like you yeah, know a production just, it was a musical number they're that, putting on a show yeah that's kind of what you do that's you yeah know? that's what performers do and you know so hey you know what we can enjoy our lives out here in north dakota and <laughs> and you know avoid all that stuff and I wish I could just say, you know, we're done with the internet, but then we wouldn't exist. Yeah, that'd be and, terrible. You know, that's... <laughs> um, commercials this year, pretty sad for the most part. <laughs> um, highlights being Ninja Turtles 2. Yep. Got a, uh, a good-looking um, trailer. And honestly, and those that have watched before know how much I detested the first movie. I can honestly say, based on the last two trailers I've seen... I have hope for this one. <laughs> I feel like this movie is the movie that they were trying to make. They've been trying to make since the cartoon series came out back in like 87. 
Right. Because I know Bebop and Rocksteady were originally supposed to be in Secret of the Ooze. Mm. And they were like, no, we want different characters in there instead. We don't want to associate that with the cartoon or whatever. So Yeah. But now that that's happening and we got like, you know, Krang and Shredder, like the real actual Shredder. Shredder yeah. Not this Robotech. Yeah. Whatever. So Alpha. this this is yeah. gonna be this is gonna be the movie that uh people our age have been waiting for since we were children. Right. Which is super exciting. And and good on them. And maybe they, they you know, maybe they listened to our rants mm-hmm. and said, you know what, those C three guys, they know their shit. We do. And this movie's for them. Actually, I think we're going to get a credit. I hope better. You know, it's I'm, right I'm, there. I'm counting on it. You know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so far, so good. My number one concern, and we've talked about it before, is, uh, you know, freaking uh, Steve Amell. Yep. And why, why they didn't at least give him a beard, give him a wig, yeah. give him something. To and, differentiate him a little bit. Yeah, like anything, anything at all to say he is... Casey Jones, yep, you know, yep. long hair, give him, you know, I mean, it honestly, to me, it's straight up, like, walked off the set of Arrow, here's a Casey Jones mask and a uh, bag full of uh, hockey sticks. Yeah. Oh, oh, here's a hood, but this one's going to be gray. It's going to be weird to see and, how, like, I don't know, interest, interesting to see his character and how that all plays out, too, because I feel like Casey Jones is such a, he's such a violent type, you know? Right. So it's going to be interesting to see how how this movie tackles it you know like the the original turtles movie tackled it with, you know he was he was violent but they didn't show him they they heavily implied, they implied. how yeah. how violent he was when he tried to attack this guy with the hockey stick yeah and when he murdered shredder and said oops yeah but you know <laughs> oh that casey yeah <laughs> so it's gonna be fun to see what, how how far they're willing to push him in this movie now it's gonna be they have that little extra edge they can probably wiggle with because you know things have come so far since then no, no what, doubt. What you can get away with in a movie. Well, and that's the thing with with this next one. I I'm excited because they they are going all out. I mean, you, mm-hmm. when you're bringing in Krang, yep. you know, you're bringing in the classics. You're bringing in Bebop, Rocksteady. It opens the door for future mutants. You know, if you're gonna go with a heavy CG route, make it look good. And again, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm still gonna bitch and bitch about them being freaking nine feet tall. Yeah. But you know what though? Based on and it's kind of funny. And this is what I'm I'm most interested. Um, to analyze when this one comes out is how well they keep their scale throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. And this is something where most people just say, whatever, it's a movie, get over it. But it's like when you, when you look at how, let's say, you know, like a Lord of the Rings Mm -hmm. and things like that. And the the, the way they did their digital effects and Mm -hmm. things like that. Whereas like hobbits, you know, were a certain size, that type of thing. And in this case, with turtles, and as we saw in the first movie, I mean, it did kind of vary a little bit th- yeah. throughout. But then, like in this case, where okay, if you're bringing in Bebop and Rocksteady, you know, you're bringing in, you know, that's freaking, you know, a couple hundred pound warthog yep. type thing, yep. you know, and you got a couple thousand pound, you know, rhino up against, you know, if tur- if if little half pound turtles turned into nine hundred pounds, then by that logic, Bebop and Rocksteady in this case should be like godzilla yeah i mean this is gonna be uh it's gonna be yeah that's kind of that if, is... they, if they go by if they go by mutagen scale i don't know what what formula they're using but <laughs> you know i think the formula they're using is called convenience <laughs> <laughs> how how tall are the turtles in the scene well whatever whatever works yeah they gotta fit through the door so that they're gonna be this tall now yeah you know just they do it, you just flow <laughs> with it you know? but it's that's kind of the same thing too talking about you know how far things have come because i remember when uh, x-men origins wolverine came out mm-hmm. his claws in that movie were oh my god like the worst cgi i've ever seen the bone because yeah. well i mean the bone is like whatever it changed the texture changed throughout the whole movie like the length changed it was just the worst right i hated it it uh-huh. it brought me out of the movie so much out oh, him breaking them off yeah that was the part that i always that i always chuckled about on how when he <laughs> when he has them chopped and then it's like well what if he had either you had to have, you know, forced out the remaining adamantium, or it would just be a continuous giant boiling scar tissue yeah. nasty. Like, <laughs> that would just constantly just be, scar tissue would just be constantly building on top of itself. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, here we are. We are in the in the era of Deadpool. This is the month in February. Finally. Deaduary, whatever after, you want to call it. After years and years of waiting for this movie. That's right. It's finally happening. Oh, and it's time. I mean, it is it is definitely time. You've got 
Ryan Reynolds, who's just hyping the the promo behind this movie has been flawless. Mm-hmm. You know, and absolutely. Cheers to those guys for doing it right. And you know what? I ho- I hope it. I hope it just skyrockets. Mm-hmm. You know, as as insane as Deadpool has gotten over the last two three years. You know, I'm guessing there's enough fans out there over the age of 18 oh, yeah. that can support this movie, and you know, we need we need comic comic. Geeks need their rated R movies. Yep, absolutely. And there's an argument to be had there, but in this case, you know, and like the they went around with the petition and whatnot of the whole. It's like, oh, there needs to be a piece, and it's like, no, no, there doesn't. Yeah. There, no need. It's rated R. Sorry, that's how it is. If you want to bring, you know, your 14, 15 year old to it, so be it. Yeah. That's your prerogative. But Deadpool is not for your twelve year olds no. and your ten year olds and. The amount of and it is kind of funny because it's like the amount of like young kids I see that come in here and I mm-hmm. always well yeah I always I mean, want Deadpool and I've it's heard, like where they where they got introduced to him <laughs> I still don't know but I've heard several yeah. you know reports too and stories that uh, the guy who's directed the movie had to stop Ryan Reynolds on multiple occasions for going too far mm-hmm. with his jokes and like there I saw the petition you know make a one for children and then I saw another petition circling around like we need an X rated version of Deadpool yeah. You know, so to have all that crap in there, and I would certainly love to watch that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I hope this one does well, and I hope it does open the door for more of those, like, R-rated comic book movies. And that's not to say you should make it R just to be R. Just to be R. But I feel but, like, you know... This, you know, it, it's going to fall in with yeah. your, your Sin Cities and Blade. And, exactly. You know, I mean, there are definitely books out there that are incur, you know, like like Preacher, for instance. Mm-hmm. That's one of my, my biggest fears right now. I was... I was ecstatic about the show announcement until i saw the preview Mm -hmm. and then now and i'm like how do you there's so much content on there that you can't dive into yeah and when you take something like i don't know let's say you know like a like hack slash or a um well like suicide squad Mm -hmm. you know i mean suicide squad right there i mean there's i guess our prime example yeah of how are they going to tone suicide squad down you know, to that PG-13, mm-hmm. and, you know, without hardly ever being naked or in a shower scene, um, which that's the version. <laughs> We'd go, yep, you know, yep. There's, there's your sales. <laughs> I'll, right there. I'll watch that. But, Several um, times. But, yeah, in that case, I mean, it's like, okay, so it's like, here's all these killers and murderers, or derp, <laughs> murderers, and, <laughs> and, you know, all these just overall <laughs> evil people. Yeah. And then you're going to say, here's a movie with, with none of that, mm-hmm. and we're just supposed to like we're supposed to like Will Smith, the assassin, because he's Will Smith. Yep, yep. You know, I want to see him. He's got charisma. Yeah, he's got charisma. You know, and if all it's going to be is Harley, it's just like that's kind of my fear. Is yeah, that well, I kind of she's feel just like... going to be the eye candy, and then she'll like maybe you know smack a few people. But I hope I hope they can go demented. Yeah, and that's where Deadpool here's their chance to just show everybody just how warped and and. Uh, well, I think a lot of the studio heads too, and I, you know, I like they, you know, we always hear people say, "Oh, rated R movies don't do well because they don't have the audience." You know, you know teens can't go see it. But I mean, looking back, I mean, I think it's maybe partly because of that, but not as much as you think. I mean, look, I don't. What's the last rated R movie, comic book movie that I remember seeing? I think it was probably like Punisher War Zone. Yeah. Which you know, I saw it, and it was just. It's just a weird. Was, wasn't a very good movie, honestly. Yeah, it's just like yeah. that so you could say much to do with you could say it here. failed because it was rated R, but correlation does not equal causation. I, mean, I think it honestly didn't do well because it just wasn't a great movie, and it was a change in actors, you know, and it was a whole new. Yeah, they were rebooting, but not, not really. really. It's just, just like, another. It can it confused people mostly. I think. Mm-hmm. Was... Well, and that was my thing with it with with War Zone. I mean, I definitely I thought it was entertaining, mm-hmm. but yeah. For most people, when you go in and you have to explain, like, nope, this isn't the Thomas Jane sequel. Yep. This is this is a very, you know, this is another famous story from from the Punisher history. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I thought they nailed it. I mean, the, the, you know, the gore and the yeah. amount of violence. But then overall, like I said, I mean, it didn't it didn't really match the the comics. Yep. It didn't. Really, it was just like here, here's some, you know, bunch of gunfights and, right. and bullet holes and whatever for no apparent reason other than. Yeah to have <laughs> it felt <laughs> very and... felt very relaxed i think kind of watch i haven't seen it in a while but it just yeah i remember just thinking it just wasn't wasn't up to snuff in a sense i mean and i just i feel like that's kind of the you know and another another classic example too you could say uh daredevil 
Oh, right. was originally supposed to be rated R, but they were like, no, we need PG-13, so they cut a bunch of crap out of the movie, and that movie tanked horribly. Oh, yeah. And I have the director's cut, the original version, and it's awesome. Everybody that has seen it that I've spoken to says they like that version much better than the original, so I mean, it's... Hmm. You gotta give things a chance sometimes, you know, and I think Deadpool, that now that they're starting out with the first movie in what's hopefully a series, and it's a new character in a sense that he's not going to be there for, or he hasn't been around for a long time since, mm-hmm. well, you know, Origins. That's really given him a chance to kind of start fresh and say, okay, here's a rated R movie right off the bat. Let's see how it does. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it'll do well and we can get the opportunity to make more down the road if if they arise. And I, and I do like the fact that, that Reynolds had already said, like, you know, he is Deadpool. Yep. Yep. From here on out. And the benefit you have there, it's like, you know what? As long as he stays in shape for what he probably will for quite some time. Cool. Absolutely. And you can, ha- you can have Deadpool and Spider-Man and Deadpool yeah. and, you know, he'll sh- show up in the X-Men, you know. Maybe it opens the doors for a... Uh, you know, an Avengers type movie okay. or a, like That'd a Deadpool awesome. cable. I mean, all his team ups, things like that. You know, I would love to see at some point in time, like a new mutants, mm-hmm. you know, not in humans, not in humans. I won't even go into that rant right now. I want a new mutants. You know, I want to see a cable and Bishop and yeah. forge and all my classic nineties. Well, I heard Ryan Reynolds mm-hmm. is already trying to get an X-Force movie off the ground. Yeah. Going, so, I mean, like they're pushing for, more already so hopefully yeah we can get that so i'd love to see that kind of stuff too the cable and the bishop and all that that's just the, the, the 90s comics pouches pouches lots pouches, and lots of pouches, pouches the movie we'll call it <laughs> big uh, muscly pouches yeah and shoulder pads hell yeah oh. guns that you're just unruly you know kind of rocket raccoon style yep you know, that's the way to do it but uh yeah, I think that kind of wraps up the last week or so. Um, so, yeah, Broncos won the Super Bowl. Uh, Deadpool comes out this week. We'll have your uh, our reviews of it on our next podcast. And until then. <laughs>